right, I'm getting out of my day. This is still day one and I've had um, a green juice when I got home, took a coffee break, and now I'm having another green juice and I'm getting ready for lunch. Uh, before I went up for my coffee break, I put a potato and some cauliflower and broccoli on to cook all, all together with just a pinch of rosemary, just a little bit of water, and I put it on really, you know, brought it to a boil and then turned it down low. So it was on maybe half an hour, 35 minutes. And um, because it was so low, it didn't boil away, but everything is cooked. I put the potato on the bottom. I thought it would help um, kind of make it creamier when I mix it all together. And I've got a salad ready to go. Got mixed greens and red pepper, and I'm going to put a little chopped onion on that. But I wanted to wait until after I got my green juice made because I didn't want to end up with any onion residue somehow getting in my juice. That I, I don't think I'd like that. So I've got my cloths. I store my cloths for the juice in, in the freezer. I give them a quick rinse in distilled water when I'm done juicing, fold them up and put them in the freezer. Uh, just stick them in a bag. And that really helps keep them longer because they can get kind of funky. I don't know what it is. I, some people, I've talked to someone and hers last six months. I don't know how she does it. I've never gotten more than a few weeks out of mine, even with, with rinsing and freezing. So um, I do do one cheat. And this is not Gerson approved, but I do use the natural coffee filters when I'm doing uh, green juice, I put one coffee filter down. Let me see if I can show you. I, here's my cloth. I've got, you know what this is? It's the old top of a cake. Like if you're a cake carrier, if you had a pan that you baked a cake in and that's the lid that would go on it, that makes a really nice little tray to put my cloth in because the juice does seep through your cloth when you put the pulp in there and it keeps me from losing it because when I get done folding it, I can just pour it from that tray into my cup, anything that might squeeze through while I'm folding. But I put that, um, what you measure, that coffee liner in the middle. And when I'm done grinding my green stuff and I have that bowl of pulp, I'll put half of it in this one and I'll top it with another uh, filter. And then I do the same thing for my second cloth. So I'll have two cloths that I put in here to compress and get my juice. And that'll make me one green juice. What I start with for my green juice is eight ounces of all the ingredients. So in this case, case I have uh, a Swiss chard leaf. I have some green leaf lettuce. I have some red leaf lettuce. I have romaine. And I have uh, a section of a green pepper. I go through one green pepper a day. So um, since I'm having six green juices, I cut it into six. If you're having four green juices, you can cut it into quarters. I just make sure I get my one pepper in. And then a little a little chunk of red cabbage. And like I said, there was, um, I couldn't get the beet greens at the store. They didn't have any watercress. I'm trying to think, they don't have any escarole. So you know, you, you make up what you can get a hold of and this is what I can get a hold of. I could have used green chard if they had it, but they didn't have any green chard. So. But this will this will make a good drink. So if I have eight ounces of that stuff, then I add an apple. So eight ounces plus an apple will make me an eight ounce green juice. So you know that I'm throwing out whatever the weight of the pulp is after that, you know, the fiber that's left after it's squeezed. So if you don't mind, I'm gonna go ahead and make my juice. You can watch me make my juice in case you've never seen that done before. And, um, it's going to be a little noisy, so I won't try and talk through it, but bear with me. It shouldn't take too long, maybe a minute or two to probably two minutes to get it all through. All right. And I didn't cut my apple yet, up yet. All I do is make sure there's no seeds in there. We don't want the seeds going through. I don't worry about trimming anything else. The weather's really changed. I'm looking out and we went from sunny and pleasant this morning to I see snow coming down. So it's trying. We don't have all our leaves up yet. All right, here we go. Now, here's one of the things. When you start using one of these machines, I always try to remember to check the bolts that hold the feed tube on 
because it's kind of scary if you forget. And and I know from experience, there's a couple times I forget. I I put this on. Let me show you really quick. You loosen these little um, fly things, uh, wing wing nuts, and this this slides on and off. There you go, and you slide it into place. And sometimes I forget to do those little wing nuts. If you forget and you start putting stuff in this becomes looser it moves out and it starts hitting the blade inside and it's horribly noisy and it's scary so i'm going to tighten that up this thing's a powerful machine you don't want to mess with it there we go so here we go what i do is i i put in some loose stuff and then put a piece of apple in with it to help push it down <laughs> I'm going to keep that. I'm going to scrape it off into my bowl. And I like to get things rinsed off right away. It can be pretty nasty if it gets dried on. And then there's a, a lot of pulp in the machine. I don't know if you can see that, but it's all... No, you can't. All right. But there's a bunch of pulp in there. I know when I first got the machine, I was a little dismayed. I thought it was going to be easier. It seemed more difficult than what I'd been using before. But once you get used to it, you can do it pretty quickly. Some people clean this out in order to press it. Some people don't. They just kind of rinse it out later on. But I... Uh, I like to clean it out because I want to get the, the benefit of that. I don't want to have to, you know, add two more ounces of greens just to get the amount I need. I know if I use it all, I'll get what I need. There. Tighten it back up again. Now I've got my bowl of mush. I'm going to use half in this one. It's about three, th three quarters of a cup of scoop, three quarters of a cup. You can't see that. There we go. I'm going to tap it. Remember, this part is not Gerson approved. It's just I found that it, the green stuff sticks to the cloth so badly, I, I couldn't get it off the cloth. My tongue's growling. I'm hungry. Okay, there's one. Putting it into the machine. Now, this is called a two-stage juicer because not only does it grind which is the first stage but it also presses and it presses with 2,000 pounds of pressure to squeeze it and then you use the cloths as a filter cloth you can't use cheese cloth it's not strong enough you have to use a very particular cloth uh, to do the pressing and it filters it and it's so nice and clear and thin uh, when it comes out and uh, it just does such a nice job. I used a, I will call an inferior juicer. When I first started the Gerson therapy, well, it's almost four years ago, uh, that juicer, uh, it was just a basic, quick, centrifugal juicer. And I did that for like a whole month. And 
yeah, it felt good, but you know, I, I wasn't noticing anything really amazing. And then we purchased this juicer and within two days of using this juicer, I had a healing reaction. So it definitely made a big difference to use the better juicer. This, these juicers are designed, there's, there's this one, the Norwalk, and there's nuts. I can't remember the name of the other juicer. Um, I want to say Juice Plus, but I don't think that's right. Anyhow, there's another juicer that's a similar two-stage juicer that um, it, in the grinding process, it's designed to not incorporate a lot of oxygen and oxidation into it. So you're getting the enzymes. It doesn't heat it up. You're getting the, the live enzymes, which is so important for your body. And you see those centrifugal juicers um, don't do that. They don't keep the live enzymes in there. And that's what makes a big difference because they they either allow heat or they allow too much air into it and it kind of destroys that. Um, bottled juices that you buy at the store are, are, are pretty much next to worthless. You, you're just getting flavor, but you're not getting a whole lot of nutrition and you're not getting any enzymes at all from anything bottled at the store. So you squish it, you have your, your fresh stuff, you put it in the two-stage juicer where it's going to press it and take out all the fiber. And the idea behind this is that you're absorbing all these nutrients. They have immediate access to your system and your body just absorbs all those nutrients up. So I'm gonna squeeze this now and you can see how that works. have these thin little packets and I open it up and I'm just gonna throw that thing out that's there's nothing useful in that anymore people want to know if they can dry them and make crackers and whatnot but all the nutrition is gone it, even the rabbits and squirrels won't eat it they know it's worthless you put it out there and they're not interested um, they'll find the little nubs off the carrots that I've trimmed, you know, the tops and the and the bottoms of the carrots that we're supposed to trim off, they'll find those and, and eat those up. They'll dig them out, but they will not touch the the pressed fiber because there's it's just fiber. Not that now fiber is good for you, but in this case, fiber alone without the uh, nutrients just isn't it's worthless. It's not good for you. You'd be better off eating, you know, the whole thing if you want the fiber. So anyhow, there's my it's a perfect eight ounces and I'm going to put my potassium in there. I put some from my big bottle into a little carry bottle to, to head out today just so that I would have it with me. I don't put the potassium in. If I'm taking my carrot juice someplace, I don't put the potassium in until I go to drink it. It's better to do it that way. And so I've got my big mug and I'm going to drink my green juice and I'm gonna have my salad and I'm gonna have my potato with the cauliflower and broccoli because I'm hungry. And then I've got work to do this afternoon. I've got to get my soup made. I haven't done that yet. So Gerson therapy, pretty much your your workspace is your kitchen. And if you're not in the kitchen, you're in the bathroom. So um, that's it. I'll be here the rest of the afternoon making my soup and working on my juices. And I hope to catch up with you tonight. 
we'll see we'll see how how tonight goes otherwise i'll see you tomorrow okay all right thanks for coming bye bye bye